Welcome to this Kangaroo Math Review session. Today we're going to be reviewing some definitions and theorems about geometry, specifically circles and lengths, and then we're going to be solving some problems. Now we all know what a circle is, but let's define it. A circle is the set of points at equal distance away from a given point called the center of the circle. So here's a diagram of a circle which has a center A, and all the points which are at equal distance away from A form the circle. For example, the point B on this diagram is one of the points along the circle. The distance from the center to any point on the circumference is called the radius of the circle. So for example, the distance from the point A to the point B here is the radius of the circle. Now let's have a look at this diagram. We have a circle. And we have a line which meets the circle at a single point, namely the point B. This type of line is called tangent to the circle. And here's how we would define it. A straight line which does not intersect a circle but touches it at a single point is said to be tangent to the circle. And we call the point B, where the line meets the circle, the point of tangency. Now here's an important fact about lines which are tangent to circles. The angle between the center of our circle, the point of tangency between the circle and a tangent line, and any point along the tangent line is a 90 degree angle. Here in this diagram, that would mean that the angle OBA is 90 degrees. Now this covers circles which are tangent to lines, but we can also talk about circles which are tangent to other circles. We would define two circles as being tangent to each other if they have exactly one point on their circumferences in common. So for example, here's a drawing of two circles that are tangent to each other because they share a point of tangency B. Now what you'll notice is that we can always draw a line which is tangent to both the large circle and the small circle. In other words, if we have two circles that are tangent to each other, there's always a line which is tangent to both of them as well. Now let's have a look at an important theorem related to circles that are tangent to each other that will come in handy in our problem solving. Suppose we have two circles that are tangent to each other. The theorem tells us that the common tangent line of the two circles is perpendicular to the lines joining the two centers. What does this mean? Well, if we look at our drawing again, you'll notice that we have the line tangent to both circles. We have the line segment from the center to the point of tangency, and we have the other line segment from the center of the other circle to the point of tangency. The theorem tells us that this line segment, OB, is perpendicular to the tangent line, but also this line segment, BK, is perpendicular to the tangent line. So with this information in mind, we can deduce that actually the points O, B, and K are collinear, meaning they all lie along the same line. And the reason for this is that the angle between O, B, and K has to be 180 degrees. Now the circumference of a circle is easily calculated given the radius. We simply take the radius and multiply it by two times pi, and we get the circumference. But what if we're not interested in the circumference of the whole circle, but we're interested in the length of some portion of the circle? Now, we would call the portion of a circle between two points on its circumference an arc. For example, in this drawing, we've highlighted in red the arc between the points A and B. What if we're interested in the length of this arc? Well, luckily for us, there's a relation which tells us this length. The relation is 2 times pi times r divided by 2 times pi is equal to the length of this arc, which is highlighted in red, divided by the angle AOB. Finally, let's review the Pythagorean theorem. Let's say we have the triangle ABC, which has side lengths lowercase a, b, and c. This triangle is right angled in c if and only if the following relations hold among the lengths of the sides, namely a squared plus b squared equals c squared. What this means is, we know that this triangle is right angled if a squared plus b squared equals c squared, 
And on the other hand, if, the, if we know that this triangle is right angled, then we know that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Now we're ready to tackle our first question. The question gives us this diagram on the right and asks us the following. The square in this figure has a side length of one. The small circle is tangent to the large circle and to two sides of the square. What is the length of the radius of the small circle? The first step in our solution should be to label the figure. Let's denote O by the center of the large circle. I will be the center of the small circle. K will be the point of tangency between the large and the small circle because we know that the two circles are tangent to each other, so they have a point of tangency. Similarly, we know that the line segment MN here, which is the side of the square, is tangent to the small circle, so it has a point of tangency with the circle, which we'll call L. And this side of the square is also tangent with the small circle, so it should have a point of tangency, which we'll call P. And finally, M, N, and Q are just the corners of the square. At this stage, what we would like to do is show that the points O, K, I, and N all lie along the same line. To do this, we can use, first of all, the theorem one that we saw, which tells us that if we have two circles that are tangent to each other, then the two centers, as well as the point of tangency, are three points that are collinear, meaning they all lie along the same line. Now we'd like to say that the point N lies along the same line as these three other points. To do this, let's note that the line segment between I and L, so the center of the small circle and the point of tangency with the line segment MN, is perpendicular to the line segment MN. And for the same reason, the line segment NQ is perpendicular to the line segment IP. What this tells us is that L, I, P, N are four points that form a small square. And so the angle between I, N, L has to be 45 degrees because I, N is a line segment which cuts this small square in half. So the square M, O, Q, N, the large square, has diagonal O, N. Therefore, the angle O, N, M is also 45 degrees. What this tells us is that the point N indeed does lie along the same line as the points O, K, and I. Let's denote the radius of the small circle by lowercase r. Now we established earlier that the points I, L, N, and P form a little square. So in particular, the line segment I, N which is the diagonal of the little square, cuts the square in half. And so ILN is a right angle triangle. Now this means we can apply the Pythagorean theorem to it to get that the length of the line segment IN squared is equal to the length of the line segment LN squared plus the length of the line segment IL squared. Now we know that LN is just the radius of the small circle. And we also know that IL is just the radius of the small circle. So really what we're getting here is that the length of the diagonal IN squared is equal to two times little r squared. So if we take the square root on both sides, we have that the length of the line segment IN is the radius of the small circle times the square root of two. And so we know that the distance between k and n is going to be the distance between k and i plus the distance between i and n. But since we know that the points k, i, and n all lie along the same line, this turns out to just be r plus r times square root of two. Finally, we know that the distance between o and n is square root of two if we just apply the Pythagorean theorem to the triangle OQN. So far what we've found is that the length of the line segment IN, which is the diagonal of this little square, is R times the square root of two. We also know that the distance between 
k in n is r plus r times the square root of 2, because we basically add the distance between k and i to the distance between i and n to get the distance between k and n. And we can do this because we know that all three of these points, k, i, and n, lie along the same line. Finally, if we apply the Pythagorean theorem to O, Q, and N, that triangle, we said that we can determine that the distance between O and N is square root of 2. Now, what this allows us to do is express the distance between O and N in two different ways. We know it's square root of 2 by using the Pythagorean theorem on this large triangle, but we can also get an alternate expression for this length by summing the sublengths. So this gives us that the square root of 2, the length of the whole diagonal, is equal to 1, which is the distance from the center of the large circle to k, plus r, the distance from k to i, plus r times square root of 2, which is the distance between i and n. So this gives us the equation square root of 2 equals 1 plus r plus r times square root of 2. Now we can solve for r in this equation to get r equals square root of 2 minus 1, divided by 1 plus square root of 2. Now, if we rationalize the denominator, which means we multiply on the top and on the bottom of this fraction by 1 minus square root of 2, we get r equals square root of 2 minus 1 all squared. And because square root of 2 minus 1 all squared is equal to 1 minus square root of 2 all squared, we see that the answer is actually e. Let's now move along to the second question. We're presented with a diagram, and the question says, the diagram on the right shows a square and four circles, two small and two large. The centers of all circles are the vertices of the square. The two large circles are congruent and are tangent to each other and to both the small circles, which are also congruent. What is the ratio between the radius of one large circle to the radius of one small circle? Now, our first step is going to be to label our diagram. So we've labeled the four centers of the circles by A, B, C, and D. And we've labeled some points of tangency by K, L, and Q. Finally, we're going to say that the radius of either of these small circles is going to be lowercase r, and the radius of either of these large circles is going to be uppercase r. Now, we're given that A, B, C, D is a square. So if we look at ABC, this is half of the square cut by the diagonal. And so it's a right angle triangle with right angle B. Now, from the first theorem we saw, since Q is a point of tangency between these two circles, we know that A, Q, and C all lie along the same line. What this means is that if we want to know the distance between A and C, we can sum the distance between A and Q to the distance between Q and C. So this tells us that the distance between A and C is just r plus r. In other words, it's 2r. So now we have a square, we have a right angle triangle, we know the length of this diagonal, and we know that these two side lengths are the same because it's a square. So we can express the Pythagorean theorem as the length of the segment AC squared is equal to the length of the segment AB squared plus the length of the segment BC squared. Now, we know that the length of the segment AC is 2 times capital R, so the square of that is going to be 4 times capital R squared. And on the other hand, we know that the segments AB and BC are both going to be r plus r, so lowercase r plus uppercase r, because the length of this side is just the length of the small radius plus the length of the large radius. So we can solve for the ratio between r and r. So we found the equation capital R times the square root of 2 minus 1 is equal to lowercase r. Now, we want to determine the ratio between capital R and lowercase r. So if we divide on both sides by lowercase r and divide on both sides by the square root of 2 minus 1 and then rationalize the denominator, we find that capital R divided by lowercase r is equal to the square root of 2 plus 1. 
So in other words, the ratio between capital R and little r is square root of 2 plus 1 to 1, which means that the answer to this question is C. Let's now complete the third and final question. We're given a diagram of three circles, and we're told that the radii of these three circles are one unit, two units, and three units, respectively. And we're also told that these three circles are all tangent to each other. We're asked to find the length of the arc denoted by question mark. So this bold arc here. Now, as we know, if we can determine the angle of this arc, then we can determine the length of this arc. So let's do that. Now, first, let's add some labels to our diagram. So we're denoting the centers of the three circles by O, P, and Q. And we're denoting the points of tangency by R, S, and T. Now, from the first theorem we saw, we know that the points O, R, P are collinear, the points P, S, Q are collinear, and finally, the points O, T, and Q are collinear. So once again, we can use the fact that we have three points that lie along the same line. And so if we want to know the length of the entire line segment, we can simply sum the smaller line segments that compose the large line segment. So for example, the distance between O and P is the distance between O and R plus the distance between R and P, which is just the radius of this circle plus the radius of this smaller circle, which turns out to be three units because it's two plus one. Similarly, the distance between P and Q is one plus three units, which gives four. And the distance between O and Q is two plus three units, which is five. So what we found is that inside our diagram is a triangle with side lengths three, four, and five. Now we can establish the equation three squared plus four squared equals five squared, which is indeed true because 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, and 5 squared is 25, and so 9 plus 16 does indeed equal 25. Now, since we have a triangle whose side lengths satisfy this equation, we can apply the Pythagorean theorem to conclude that this triangle must be right-angled in P. So we know that the angle OPQ is 90 degrees. Since the angle OPQ is 90 degrees, then the angle of this bold arc has to be 360 degrees minus 90 degrees. Or in other words, it has to be 3 quarters of the total 360 degrees of the circle. So what this tells us is, whatever the circumference of the full circle is, the length of this bold arc has to be 3 quarters of the total circumference. Now, since we know that the total circumference of this small circle is 2 times pi times 1, then the length of this arc is 3 quarters times 2 times pi times 1, which is 3 times pi divided by 2. So the answer is D. This concludes the lesson. Thank you very much for your attention.